morning. I want to welcome you to worship this morning. A special welcome to our guests. If you don't have a church home, we'd love for this to be your home. It's a great family to be in, and we'll take you anytime we can get you. Uh, we, we have a, a number of announcements this morning because there is a whole lot going on. Um, first of all, I want to call your attention to this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Our middlers are going to be meeting at, uh, they're going to be meeting at Cease Farms for the corn maze. And so, basically, if you had a members only jacket that you wore to school, you're probably a middler well, or female. Um, but if you had guys that had members only jackets, uh, you're probably a middler. But it's for like middle aged people like me, um, older kids that don't need babysitters, but some of them do, it's okay. Actually, if you want to come, why don't you come to Seas Farms this afternoon? It's a great time. We're going to be making it through the corn maze. Um, and I have to be out in an hour and a half because I've got council at 6. So that also reminds me to tell you that we have council tonight at 6 o'clock. And so um, please pray that I don't get lost in the maze. Um, but if that's not your thing, at 4.30, our walking club is starting back up. And there is a sign-up sheet in the back. Um, if you're, if you're not already signed up in the walking club, they're going to be meeting here at 4.30 and they're going to be making, uh, they're going to be walking the, the trail in Pisgah Park today. So you can come out and enjoy that as well. Um, and for those of you who are new to the Pisgah family and are wondering more and more about the church, and are, maybe if you're thinking of joining us, um, we're having a, a Pisgah 101 class. It is next Sunday at 3 o'clock. And we would love for you to come there. Just let us know so that we can know how many, to, how many are planning to attend that. Also, next Sunday, if you do not already have your flu shot, we're going to be giving it to you here. Um, if you want one, you can get one. There's a sign-up sheet for that in the Narthex as well. Just um, sign up and bring your arm, um, and we will hook you up. Uh, the, I mean, the, the flu is nasty, and we would love to do it. Um, also, uh, Trunk or Treat's coming up on the 29th, and so sign up for that as well. And the church council nominations are, sheets are out there. So if you or someone you love um, or someone you know is, you feel someone is called to, to serve on church council, just circle their name. Do not cross your name out. If you cross your name out, I'm going to see that as a circle, and we're going to nominate you for council. <laughs> But don't worry, if you're, if you're, but we will check with you before you're nominated. And so just because somebody circles your name doesn't mean that you're automatically nominated. You do have the opportunity to decline that nomination before it um, goes to the congregation. Um, but that is a good way for many, many people to, to be able to have the opportunity to serve. That, oh, there is one more announcement. Um, outside... Uh, if you go out these side doors right here and turn to the left, the second and I think it's the second and third doors are now the new Pisgah Lutheran Church exercise room. There, there are treadmills, there are ellipticals, there, there, there are bikes. There are things that you can do to get or stay in shape. There's great ways to exercise and and to to take care of your body. And so you don't have to have them in your home anymore. You don't have to go out and buy one. You don't have to go and pay $100 a month to, to use it at somebody's gym. You can come here and use it for free. Um, Miss Virginia Bishop is going to have uh, cards that all you need to do is just go up to the door, use your card, and it'll let you in. But, but she told me that it's, that it's open now. If you want to check it out after church today, um, you should be able to get in there and, and look at it. That's all the announcements that we have this morning. Let us stand together and confess our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, trusting in your grace. And we ask that you forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May we share that peace with one another.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the fifth chapter of Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected to, it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? What, when I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yet yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its head, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the second reading is from the third chapter of Philippians. Paul writes, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, 
as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting that what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Jesus said to the crowds, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to some tenants and went away to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. And he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is their heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in his eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces, and it will crush anyone upon whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite the children forward for some special time with Deacon Deborah. Everybody, okay. So, what kind of fruit do you like? Watermelon. Watermelon, yes. What kind of fruit do you like? Carrots. Carrots? Okay. <laughs> we'll take it. Carrots are good too. What about apples? What about apples? Does anybody like apples? Yeah. Or grapes? Yeah. yeah. Or hmm, what else? Okay, bananas. Do you like bananas? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. I think some of you may even like applesauce, which comes from apples, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I brought a fruit cup today. Look how beautiful it is, all those colors. It's got watermelon, which is my favorite, and cantaloupe, which is another favorite, and honeydew. Have you ever had honeydew? I like honeydew. I do, too. It's, okay, so beautiful fruit salad, all kinds of colors, and it's good for us, too, isn't it? Okay? Well, in the Bible, Jesus tells us that about fruit, and he is... He's not speaking about this kind of fruit. He's talking about the good things that we do to help others and to honor God. And he tells a story about this man who owns this, this grape yard, grape vineyard, okay? And, and so the, he hires people to live in it and work it, and then they are supposed to pay him with grapes. But when the time came for them to pick the grapes and give some back to the man who owned the land... They wouldn't give him the, his grapes, okay? And so he sent people three times to get grapes, and, and they wouldn't give him any. And so he had this beautiful vineyard with lots of grapes in it, but he didn't get any of them, okay? Now, God gives us the ability to grow and produce fruit, okay? Now, not fruit like this, even though some of us out there probably do grow some, but our fruits are those loving things that we do to, to, to honor God, to help others, okay? And just like there are a lot of different kinds of fruit, there are a lot of different ways that we can serve others, okay? We can pray for somebody who's sick. We can be kind to somebody in our school, our friends. We can help our parents around the house. Who helps parents by picking up their toys? Yeah, you can do that, okay? We can visit people when they're sick or when they're in a nursing home. And we can share our special talents like singing or maybe painting a beautiful picture, all right? Can you think of other ways that we can serve people? Can you pick up stuff if they drop it? Is that helping? That's right. Okay, what else can we do to serve other people? We can help them. Yeah, okay. So every time you do a loving thing for somebody else, that means that you are producing fruit that honors God. Okay? Can you remember that? Let's pray. Dear God, help us to be beautiful fruit and to share your love with others. Amen. Thank you for coming up and you can go back to your seats. And as the children are going back to their seats, please stand for our hymn of the day.
Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for giving us this time so that we may hear your word. Bless this time that it may be a blessing to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm about to step on some toes and let me go ahead and apologize ahead of time. But there's a pet peeve that I have that I think that I need to share with not only you but for the internet world out there because it's a problem that we have in this country. And my pet peeve is bad grammar. It just, oh, it just eats me away. But it's not every bit of bad grammar. I'm not like, you know, an English teacher or something like that. But I, I will say there's one thing in particular that just, mm. So I'm going to give you all a little quiz. It goes like this. Tell me which one is right. Johnny and I are going to the store with Ben. Johnny and me are going to the store with Ben. Johnny and I. All right, all right. Now here's the second one. Ben is going to the store with Johnny and I. Ben is going to the store with Johnny and me. Me. Yeah, see, y'all aren't quite as, you're not quite as sure on that one. We did hear a lot of right answers. But it is the second one, Johnny and me. Because you see... When you use I, it's the subject. And when you use me, it's the object. My English teacher taught me this little trick, if you don't know it. You just substitute a pronoun in its place. So you would say, we are going to the store with Ben, right? Not us are going to the store with Ben. Us would be equivalent to Johnny and me. But you would also not say, Ben is going to the store with we. See, that sounds really weird. We are going, Ben is going to the store with us, which would be Johnny and me. So now you know, world, that's the per correct way to use the I. And I guess it, it, it gets on my nerves, like the, the first part doesn't really bother me. If somebody goes, me and Johnny, that's just regular plain talk. The other one, people are trying to use good grammar, they're just wrong. And that just, oh, that, that just chaps my heart. It just... But, but pet peeves are just, they're minor annoyances, right? Like crooked pictures or hearing people chew. I mean, you know, that's not like going to send you over the edge unless you're already in a bad mood. But there are things that absolutely infuriate us. You could be having a great day and when this happens, it just makes you mad. For me, rude people. Oh, rude people just make me mad. You know, I mean, look. Traffic is horrendous in Lexington. It is for everybody. It, nobody is excused from the horrific traffic. So if I let you out, wave. I don't owe it to you. You, don't de you didn't do anything to deserve me letting you out of the traffic. Just say thank you. It's not hard. And if somebody messes up your order, be nice. People make mistakes. Believe it or not, you might even make a mistake every once in a while. There is no reason to, to, to bring anybody's mama into it, you know? <laughs> and, 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 you know, there, there's... Oh, let me tell you something infuriating. It happened just last night at 2.45. Why is it that smoke detectors only run out of batteries in the middle of the night? <laughs> Can somebody please tell me that? It is 2023. So last night I had a dream that someone said, low battery. And I, and I realized it wasn't a dream when Stacey wakes me up and says, something just said low battery. And so my smoke detector can now speak to me in addition to having a beep, but it can't wait until morning to speak to me. And it could also be helpful if it would tell me which one it is. I mean, I'm sitting here going, okay, is it that one? No, is it that one? Walking all around the house. Oh, and by the way, the new ones, they take AA batteries, not 9-volt batteries, which were downstairs that I had to go and get to replace the one that was right outside my bedroom. That just absolutely infuriating, right? I mean, there are some things that are absolutely infuriating in this world. I mean... It, traffic can be infuriating. Somebody cutting you off can be infuriating. 
People who are staring at their cell phone instead of, you know, interacting with the people around them, that can infuriate some people. Coming to church and hearing about money can infuriate people. So we have a problem. <laughs> because here's, here's the thing. Jesus talked about money a lot. The only two things he talked about more than money is kingdom of God and love. Third place, money. And, got really bad news for you today. Today's gospel lesson, it's kind of about money. Now you may be thinking, I didn't hear anything about money in there. Well... You see, here's the thing. Jesus is in a bad mood in chapter 21 of Matthew. If you got a Bible at home, go home today and write next to 21, Matthew 21, Jesus is in a bad mood. Because here's what happens. He comes in a palm parade, great. I'm sure he felt good. But then, right after that, he gets off his donkey. Maybe it was uncomfortable, I don't know. And he goes and cleanses the temple. And then, he, he's still on the wrong side of the bed when he wakes up the next morning, because he went back to Bethany, comes to Jerusalem, curses a fig tree on the way, and then he, then the, he starts teaching, and the, and the elders and the chief priests, and now they're questioning him, and so he starts telling these parables. And then he tells the, the parable that we heard today. Now, here's the thing. Why, you may ask? Okay, he cleansed the temple. Why? Because they were making it into a marketplace. They were... Banging a profit off of God. Uh-uh. Why did he curse a fig tree? Because it wasn't bearing fruit. It wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. Its job was to make fruit. And it wasn't doing it. And then number three. Well, on the surface, it doesn't sound like any of those. Right? Because what we have here is Jesus tells a story about a landowner. And the landowner... Um, he, he makes a, a wonderful vineyard and he plants all the vines and he builds a fence around it, you know, makes a watchtower, a wine press. And then he leaves and he, he rents it to some tenants. He leases it to some tenants. And, I mean, it works the same way it would work today, right? Um, they work the land, they take care of everything, and then they pay part of the profits to the landowner. Well... It takes a long time to get a vineyard going, probably about four years. And so he goes out of the country. And so after they had made everything and, and were, you know, it's harvest time, he sends some slaves to do it. And rather than paying the slaves what was owed to the landowner, they killed one, beat another one, and stoned another one. Now, interesting. You know why they left one alive? So he could go back and tell. And so... He went back, and so the landowner sent even more slaves, and they did the same thing to them. And then he goes, well, fine, I'll send my son because, you know, they'll respect him. And they're like, no, if we kill him, we can have it all for ourselves. We'll take his inheritance. And so they killed him too. Now, again, on the surface, this makes perfect sense, right? It says, okay, all of the slaves before were the prophets, the prophets that God had sent to tell the Israelites to repent. To tell the Israelites to live correctly. To tell the Israelites to bear fruit. And if you read the Old Testament, those prophets were not treated well. Many of them were killed. Many of them were outcast. Many of them were beaten. But then, and finally, God sends his son. Because they'll respect him. And how was that son treated? He was killed. So it kind of matches up, right? But as we, the 21st century people of God, are hearing this, we're like, yeah, they shouldn't have done that. But I think that there's another way that we can also look at this parable. Because I think it's about why the tenants kept their stuff. Because you see... We hear and we might even utter the same thing a lot of times. Because there's a few reasons for justifiable homicide in this country. And one of them just happens to be somebody coming to your place trying to get what you have. Right? Well, if you take this from the tenant's point of view, that's exactly what they were doing. 
They were the ones that had worked this land. They were the ones who would pour their blood, sweat, and tears into all this. They had produced those grapes. They had, they had crushed them and made the wine. This was their profit. Who was this guy to come and, and, and try to take it from me? And so when he sends people, they get rid of them. And he sends somebody back to say, don't try it again. And then he does try again. And he keeps trying. Because why? This is my stuff. This is my land. These are my grapes. What makes you think that you deserve any of them? Now, the sensible people that we all were like, uh, because he's leasing the land to them, right? It's his. And the deal was, all he had to do was give some of it back. That was the deal. Dear friends, everything we have belongs to God. Everything we have belongs to God. We are merely stewards of it. You see, these tenants, they were stewards. Because what does a steward do? A steward takes something that belongs to someone else and cares for it. That's what stewardship means. The very act of stewardship is caring for something that belongs to God. And it's not just money. It's our time, our talent, and our treasure. It's Caring for that which God gave us to use, our, our, our bodies, our talents, our abilities to be able to, to serve. It's the time that we have to be able to, the 24 hours a day, seven days a week that God has given us to do what, what needs to be done. And it's also, yes, it's our money as well. But how much of the time do we say, it's my money, it's my time, it's my abilities? Oh, sure, I might give a little, a, a, a kick back a little bit, you know, to God. But at the end of the day, it's mine. I earned it, right? And that's exactly what the tenants did. They claimed everything that was, that, that was produced... As their own. And they didn't want to give any of it up. So if you want to know what makes the Lord livid. It's not producing fruit. It's not giving back to God. That which is owed to God. Because you see. They weren't stewards. They weren't stewarding the stuff. They were stealing it. Right? Which makes us. Which begs the question. Are we stewarding? Or are we stealing? And that's the question I think that we need to go home and ask ourselves today. I'm not going to send you home from here and say, I want you to get out your checkbook and balance it and make sure that you give more next week. I'm not saying that. What I am going to say, though, is sometime today, take a, a, a moment or two and just ask yourself, am I stewarding or am I stealing? Am I taking a portion of what God has given me to, to use, to bear fruit, to, to, to give? And am I giving some of it back? Or am I keeping it all for myself? Because everything we have belongs to God. And I want you to imagine what it could be like if everyone actually was producing the fruit that we were called to produce. If everyone was giving back to the landowner that which he deserves. Can you imagine what we could do here in this place what we could do for, for our congregation what we could do for this community for this state for the world can you imagine what it would look like if all of God's people were actually stewarding instead of stealing I can tell you a lot of the world's problems would just go away because we would be given our time to help we would be given our talents the things that make us special and using them for ministry. We would be given our money. And, if, and it was all pulled together. Imagine the amazing things it could do. This evening, the Congregation Council is going to meet to, to talk about the 2024 spending plan for ministry. It's the meeting that we all look forward to year-round. And we look at this and it's like, wow, how are we going to do this? Well, I'll tell you how. It's because... As we all steward what God's given us, as we all do our part, as we all bear fruit, 
we step back and see the amazing things that God can do here at Pisgah in our lives, in this community, and in this world. So ask yourself, am I stewarding or am I stealing? Amen. stand <clears throat> living together in trust and hope we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. We give you thanks and praise, O God, praise, o God for you have made us your own through Christ Jesus. Though we repeatedly rejected your ways and destroyed your messengers, you sent your Son to us to renew heaven's call. Though the crowds recognized him as a prophet, those who coveted his inheritance seized and killed him. But you raised him from the dead, and now, through the power of his resurrection, he stands as the cornerstone, the first fruits of the kingdom, and the unequal prize towards which we press. Almighty God, we pray for our church here at Pisgah, our conference, synod, and churchwide our ministers and leaders, all involved in mission, care, and witness. Open our eyes to see you at work in our world. Grant us wisdom in sharing our gifts to show your love, grace to encourage our congregation, and courage to transform our community. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we pray for our families, friends, and neighbors, remembering those who are angry, dispirited, and grieving, that God's light and love may come into their lives. We pray for those who are ill, in pain, frightened of what is to come next, those known to us personally, especially Wanda Amick, Donald and Jeanette Clamp, Evelyn Kiesler, Lisa Kirby, Judy Kaiser, Betty Roof, Roger Cease, those on our prayer list, and those we name in our hearts. Grant them comfort and healing. We pray for those who mourn, especially Mark Maccabee and family, that they may feel your love for them. We pray for our children, youth, and young people. May your spirit give them guidance and show them the way ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we are aware of the struggle between good and evil, of suffering and disaster in our world, before which we feel helpless. But we believe that all creation has value in your eyes, and we bring before you the people and situations that concern us, the victims of fires, floods, and hurricanes, innocent people caught up in war and violence, people suffering from poverty, hunger, and homelessness, people in this country injured, traumatized, dying as a result of crime. We pray for the leaders of nations and communities, people with influence, that they may have your wisdom and understanding. May your love triumph over hatred and bitterness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us pray. 
And to your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The coolest thing happened this morning. Um, one of our littlest ones, uh, Emma Ludwig, showed me a picture that she had for Jesus. And I told her to put it in the offering plate, because that's what we do. Part of what we do, part of what we make, we give in the offering plate. And we not only do it in the offering plate, we can also give online. We can use the QR code that's in the bulletin. Um, go on to pisgagives.com. We can use our church app. But however, whenever and wherever we do it, we are able to give back of what we make to God. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, you can do it the same way. And those of you who aren't yet part of the Pisgah family, we encourage you to give as well. Because as we all do a piece of what we have, as we, as we share our fruits with the world, that's where real ministry happens. Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and at all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending We give you thanks, almighty and ever-living God, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to this world so that we may have life and life eternal. For it is he who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, gracious God, as we gather around your table, join us as one and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We are all invited to come and receive the body and blood of Christ. After the worship leaders have communed, please make your way down the center aisle and around the altar rail, kneeling or standing as you are able. Those of you to my left, please begin at the front of the altar rail, and those of you to my right, please go around to the back. And after you've received the bread and the wine, please return to your seats by the side aisles for a time of prayer and thanksgiving. If for any reason you're not communing, we invite you to come forward to receive a blessing. If you can't come forward, let our ushers know and we'll bring the meal to you. And those of you who are worshiping with us online, we encourage you to commune with us as we say this is the body of Christ given for you and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now come, the table is prepared.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, dear friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Share your gifts to show God's love. Thanks be to God.